This is the island of Puerto Rico. I live with my mother, father, and 12-year-old sister, Tanya. My name is Jose, and I'm nine years old. We live near a city in San Juan, which is the capital of Puerto Rico. It's 5.30 in the morning, and mom's waking me up for school. Dad wakes up Tanya. It's really hard for us to get up when it's still dark outside. We have to get up early because mom drives Tanya and I to school, and we need to leave our house by 6.30 so we don't get stuck in traffic. Mom says Puerto Rico is one of the most crowded islands in the world, and sometimes it seems like we're all on the same road at the same time. Puerto Rico is an island in the warm Caribbean Sea. It gets hot here, so mom puts antiperspirant under my arms so I won't sweat so much. Mom makes everyone cocoa for breakfast, and we're also having cereal. TV's just starting for the day, so they always play the Puerto Rican national anthem. They show our flag in the Capitol building in San Juan. Puerto Rico is part of the United States, but we're not a state, we're a commonwealth. Today, we really wanted to watch the weather report because for the last few days, a big storm called a hurricane has been forming over the Atlantic Ocean. Now it's starting to move in our direction. Weather reports can tell us where the hurricane is and how strong the winds are. But we just have to wait and see where and when it will move. Dad packs cold drinks for us to take to school. Then he loads my book bag in the car. We take our books home every night, and they're so heavy that most students have book bags with wheels. It takes about a half hour to get to Tanya's school. Traffic isn't too heavy. We're watching the sky and wondering if those are hurricane clouds. Tanya wants to be an artist, so she goes to a special art school. Most young people finish high school or college and live with their parents until they get married. Some parents won't allow their daughters to go out on a date unless they have a brother or older friend with them. But all parents think good manners are important. So we're taught not to look adults in the eye, not to show anger in front of strangers, don't stare, don't call older people by their first names unless they ask you to, don't speak unless spoken to, don't yell, and don't enter or leave a room without permission. After mom drops me off at school, she goes to the hospital where she works as a nurse. She supervises a kidney dialysis unit. Mom says our kidneys clean our blood. If someone's kidneys stop working, these machines can clean their blood for them. That's called dialysis. Dialysis has to be done every couple of days. So mom and the other workers decide to call people who use the machines and tell them to come in right away because if the hurricane hits, they may not be able to get to the hospital for several days. While we're in school, Dad's visiting customers. He works for a company that makes scales that scientists use to weigh things. Sometimes they need to have their scales adjusted or fixed. In science and medicine, it's important to weigh things exactly right. Dad knows just how much this piece of metal weighs, and he adjusts the scale until it shows exactly the same weight. After Dad picks Tanya up from school, he stops at a cash machine. The way it works is that the bank's computer gives Dad the amount of money he wants, and then the computer subtracts that amount from the money that mom and dad have in their bank account. Puerto Rico uses US dollars. Then dad and Tanya go shopping for things we might need if the hurricane hits. Bottled water is on everybody's shopping list because hurricanes can cause floods that pollute the city's drinking water. They get batteries for flashlights and portable radios in case the wind knocks down the electric wires so we don't have any electricity. 
Some of the shelves in the store are already picked clean by people who want to buy food they can eat without cooking. Everyone's wondering, will the hurricane hit Puerto Rico or not? The weather center gives each hurricane a name, and this one is called Jose, which is my name and my dad's name. motion is expected to continue during the next 24 hours. On this track, Jose should move over the portions of the Lesser Antilles on Wednesday, but weather should begin to deteriorate tonight. Maximum sustained winds are near 75 miles per hour, confined to a small area of the center with higher gusts. People all over the island are preparing by covering their windows so they won't get broken. People check the TV often to see where the storm is and how strong the winds are. Jose is already hitting some of the other Caribbean islands and it's caused lots of damage. But the weather here in Puerto Rico is still fine. Kids are jumping off the bridge like they do on most sunny days. Ah! Tourists are wondering how much more time they'll be able to spend on the beaches. Lots of tourists come to Puerto Rico, especially on big cruise ships. They like to visit El Moro Fort. The Spanish built it after Christopher Columbus came. Columbus was the first European to come to Puerto Rico. He was on his second voyage to the New World looking for land for Spain. He found thousands of native people already living here. But he told them, this island now belongs to Spain. The native people called the island Borinquen that means land of the noble lord, after the creator god, Yukiyu. But the Spanish changed the name to Puerto Rico, which means rich port, even though the island already had a name. This is old San Juan. It's the oldest part of the capital city. But modern San Juan has grown so much, you can drive for an hour and still be in the city. The weather is still good enough for people to visit El Yunque rainforest. Lots of forest was cleared for growing sugarcane and later tobacco. The Spanish people forced the native people to work in the cane and tobacco fields. Later, the Portuguese brought slaves from Africa to do the work. That's why Puerto Rico is a mixture of many people and cultures. At 3 o'clock, Mom picks me up at my teacher's home, where some of us wait after school for our parents. Dad and Tanya are getting home too, and our dog Chico always comes out to meet us. I also have a pet rooster, whose name is Piojito. <laughs> he pecks at anything he finds interesting, and sometimes that's me. <laughs> I feed him rice, but he also likes to find food in the yard. I love animals, and I'd like to be a veterinarian when I grow up. My friends and I play in the road in front of our house. I'm playing, mom's cooking supper. She's making meat, rice, beans, and olives. We usually have supper at about seven o'clock. And I like to watch TV while we eat. Then I go out to play while mom goes over the work I did at school. She signs each page to show the teacher that she looked at it. 
When I come in, Dad washes dishes while Mom helps me with my home. Usually takes about a half hour. It's still pretty hot, so we use fans to keep cool. After I finish my work, I tell a friend about a place where Tanya's Girl Scout troop went. It has big walls with little places to put your hands and feet when you climb. You have to wear a safety rope that an older person holds at the other end so you won't get hurt if you fall. It's time to get ready for bed. Mom says school's been canceled for tomorrow because Jose is still headed our way. But I'm so tired, that doesn't stop me from going to bed. Good night. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you how the hurricane turned out. Well, the next day school was closed. The weather got windy and the waves got bigger and it began to rain. But a few hours before the hurricane reached Puerto Rico, the storm turned north and went out to sea so it didn't hit our island. Even though everyone went to a lot of trouble to get ready, we were glad Jose didn't hit. Now things are getting back to normal. I guess people here believe it's better to be safe than sorry, even if being safe is a lot of work. What do you think? I live here on a farm with my mom and dad. It's 5.30 in the morning when mom wakes me up for school. My name is Laura and I'm eight years old. I'm having cheese and toast and an orange for breakfast. Dad's having latte, which is coffee with hot milk and sugar. After breakfast, I finish getting ready for school. Students at most schools wear uniforms. Our school does too, but on days when we have sports, everyone wears gym clothes. My school's almost an hour's ride from our farm. Dad drops me off on his way to work in San Juan. He says my book bag weighs more than I do. Let's go, Mama. Adios, Aurora. Nos vemos. Bye. Bye. I go to a private school, which means my parents pay for me to go there. Puerto Rico has public schools too, but this school teaches classes in both English and Spanish. Spanish is our national language because Puerto Rico belonged to Spain for 400 years. It's good to know English here because Puerto Rico is now part of the United States. Spain gave Puerto Rico to the United States when the U.S. won the Spanish-American War about a hundred years ago. So now we're a U.S. Commonwealth. A lot of people think that's a good thing. A lot of others would like Puerto Rico to become a state. A third group, including my parents, think Puerto Rico should be an independent country. That's because, even though Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, we can't vote. So the United States often make decisions for us that my parents think we Puerto Ricans should decide for ourselves. Mom and Dad think the U.S. must have felt the same way when it was a colony of England. 
The English were telling the colonies what to do. And the colonists didn't like some of the English decisions. That's why the colonies wanted independence. Mom said people sometimes ask her why they want me to learn English. And she tells them it's because someday a girl who speaks good English will negotiate Puerto Ricans' independence. In the middle of the morning, we have a snack. While we're eating, we can hear the kids outside having their physical education classes. In this game, they try to grab a can in the center of the circle without getting tagged. After snack break, we have English class. In our school, we also use English when we study science and math. Today, our teacher reminds us to use the pictures in the book to see what the people in the story are doing to get clues about what they are saying. She says that works in real life, too. While I'm in school, Mom and her workers, Edwin and Guillermo, are cutting bananas. When Mom started farming, she decided to grow a kind of small, sweet bananas. She says bananas are interesting plants because each plant only makes one bunch of fruit. After we cut the bunch, we cut the rest of the plant down. But there's a part of the plant underground that doesn't die. It sends up new shoots that will have a bunch of bananas in about a year. The old leaves and stem will rot and turn into soil to feed the new plant. Edwin is using a machete to cut the banana plant. He and Guillermo make it look easy, but it's not. About a year and a half ago, Puerto Rico had a bad hurricane. Our family went to stay with my grandparents, who live in a strong brick house in town. The storm winds blew for two and a half days. When it was over, my parents came back and found our barn had blown down and most of our banana plants had been destroyed. Bananas from the new shoots are just ripening now. Mom decided to think of other plants that might grow faster. Finally, she decided to grow tropical flowers. Will, will lose the brilliant colors. Mom's friend thinks she should grow food instead of flowers. That's because if times get bad and people don't have much money, they'll still need to buy food, but they won't have to buy flowers. Mom says she's going to grow both. Mom and Dad learned how to raise plants in college. They believe in growing things in ways to keep the soil and our planet healthy. So, Mom's always thinking of ways to do that. One way is with fertilizer. Plants need food just like people do. Plant food is called fertilizer. Mom likes to use fertilizers that will help make the soil healthier as it feeds her plants. So she and her workers go to a chicken farm and put the chicken manure in bags to use as fertilizer on our plants. Manure is the stuff that's left when chickens go to the bathroom. Well, chickens don't really use a bathroom. Oh, y you know what I mean. Manure is what's left of food after digestion is done. It makes great fertilizer because it has lots of food that plants can use. Another way mom keeps the soil healthy is with a big, tall grass called patchouli. Mom's crazy about patchouli. 
That's because it solves a big problem. A lot of Puerto Rican farms are on mountainsides, and heavy rain often washes soil away down the mountain. That's called erosion. Each patchouli plant can be divided into a lot of little pieces. They plant the pieces in rows along the hillside. Each one will grow into a big plant in a few months. Patchouli grass holds the soil in place and helps the rain soak into the ground instead of running down the mountain. Mom says by making our soil healthy and by keeping the soil in place, our land should get better and better as years go by. Dad works for a company in San Juan that sells fruit and vegetables to stores and restaurants. Many fruits and vegetables are grown at different times of the year all around the world. So if a restaurant wants to buy tomatoes, Dad knows he can find them in Puerto Rico in February, or in New Jersey in August, or in South America at other times of the year. His computer helps keep track of his customers' orders. If a customer wants to know why they haven't gotten the oranges they ordered, Dad's computer can tell them the oranges are still on a ship coming from Jamaica. At about three, Mom leaves home to pick me up at school. We have a rain gauge in our yard so we can measure how much rain we get. On the north central side of the island, where we are, we get almost twice as much rain as on the south side. She needs to stop for a few things at the grocery store in town. My parents would like to grow as much food as they can for our family. And they try to buy only things we really need. They say they don't want to waste their lives working to make money to buy things they don't need. That's one reason we don't have a TV. They think the ads on TV try to make us think we need to buy something so we can look or feel good. Today, after Mom picks me up, she takes me to a piano lesson that I have once a week. I fell asleep during the half an hour ride to my teacher's house, and it takes me a while to wake up. My music teacher is a singer and dancer. After my lesson, we go home, and Mom and I check to see how much rain we got today. Then we have supper. We're having rice, beans, and ham that Mom made yesterday. When Mom cooks, she likes to make enough so we can eat it for several meals. Then she doesn't have to spend so much time every day cooking. Mom peels an orange for me. The idea is to take off the orange part of the peel and leave the white part so the orange is soft and squishy, but doesn't have any leaks. Now I can drink the juice from my disposable container. I take a shower before I do my homework. When I take a shower, I'm usually not alone. Two cokies live in a toy boat on the edge of our bathtub. 
Cokies are very small frogs that have very large voices. People like to have them in their homes because they eat insects and they sing us to sleep. Cokies often climb to the tops of trees during the night, and when the sun comes up, they jump all the way to the ground without getting hurt. Dad said once he was playing his guitar in the bathroom so he wouldn't keep Mom awake, and the cokies were singing along with him. When he started playing, they started singing. When he stopped, they stopped. Maybe Dad and the cokies should go on tour. I usually do homework for about an hour before I go to bed. Mom helps me use a big Spanish language dictionary to look up the meaning of words I don't know. No, lo gracioso es la palabra que encontré después de cojo. Después de cojo encontré una palabra muy graciosa. Today, Edwin's family and ours are going on a special trip about an hour away to see the world's largest radio telescope. While we're waiting to go in, we're listening to sounds with my directional microphone. It lets us hear things clearly, even if we're far away. It works almost exactly like this huge radio telescope we came to see. But this telescope isn't listening to birds. It's listening for radio waves from outer space. They hope to hear signals that tell us there's other intelligent life in the universe. Even when I'm tired, I like to read a story before I go to sleep. After the hurricane destroyed our barn, Mom and Dad moved my bed into the living room so they could use my bedroom to store some things that couldn't be left outside. After we build our new barn this summer, I'll move mm. back into my room. Dad and Mom mm -hmm. talk while I read. This is special because Dad usually doesn't get home until Mom and I are asleep, which is what I'm going to do now. Good night. <laughs>